Hi everyone, welcome to another video on New World. In this video, we are going to break down what was discussed in the dev, dev update for September. And before we do that, I just wanted to say, um, still about 90% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. So please do subscribe, it will help me out a lot. Um, and I hope you enjoy this video. So let's get into it. What was discussed in the dev update? One of the things that wasn't discussed and which a lot of people were expecting was what's going to happen for the one year anniversary of new world so far it looks like nothing there hasn't been any update uh, with respect to anything being added or any festival or any drops or anything like that yet um, but what they did discuss were things that i think are pretty interesting one of the biggest things is more solo play for end game content what that means is you will be able to do more end game content on your own versus having to raid, versus having to go into um, expeditions and do those. Uh, raids are also something that they are planning. Uh, these are going to be 20 to 30 people raids, um, maybe 35. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but they did mention it. So these are also coming for the end game. So there will be some bosses to fight that uh, will require a lot more coordination. And it'll be a lot of fun to see what uh, these raids look like. Um, some PvE content that is hard or is as hard as wars currently are for PvP. So PvE basically means that you'll have things to do that will be fighting probably legions of monsters coming at the towns, I'm guessing, or the, the settlements. Uh, so it's kind of like war, so it's a defend the base type of thing most likely is my guess. Um, so yeah, you guys can speculate in the comments. if you What do you think that would be? And what do you think the raids are going to be like? I, I have a feeling the raids, one of them will probably probably be the worm in Brimstone Sands. I know some of you have seen that um, through gameplay that people have posted. I did see it on my first playthrough of Brimstone Sands. And I didn't play through all of it because the, the one of the missions was bugged. Uh, so I stopped playing. Uh, but I did see the worm and it looks pretty awesome. So another thing that they discussed was... A method for gear change or um, outfit change basically or um, loadout change so you could have a gear set for tanking a gear set for uh, PvE a gear set for PvP a gear set for crafting and uh, they're working on uh, things that they can do to allow us to swap that gear and do different things throughout the world without having to go into our inventory and swap out the particular uh, pieces ourselves there will probably be um, nodes or basically uh, specific gear sets that we can equip and uh, switch between. I'm guessing it'll probably cost Azoth, uh, but uh, and also possibly real money. We'll see how they implement that. Uh, mounts confirmed, definitely coming into the game. Uh, but in terms of timeline, there is no timeline. KD was very adamant about that. No timeline for mounts, uh, but they are in the conceptualization of mounts and uh, the designing phase of mounts. Uh, the world is continuing to grow as well. So we got Brimstone Sands and they have more areas planned after that. The They did talk a lot about the Inead Expedition and um, how the Inead Expedition is going to do or going to result in some event once you go through the story. And I haven't played enough of the Brimstone Sands to know exactly what that is. And I, I wouldn't want to spoil it for anybody or for myself. So if you haven't seen it yet, I wouldn't recommend searching for it. But my guess is that's what's going to lead into the next story arc. Um, and that's how we'll probably get a new area. Maybe one with Ancients. Maybe one with the, the, the Angry Earth. Uh, who knows? Uh, and then one of the, the coolest things that uh, they talked about were the 26th. 26 ancient glyphs that you can find throughout brimstone sands so these glyphs they are part of the ancients language and they can do things like open two-way portals so you can portal in and out of certain areas or to certain areas they can unlock secret chests within expeditions and labyrinths they can lower magical walls that would result in you finding hidden rooms and these were just some of the examples that they uh, announced in relation to the 26 ancient glyphs that are hidden throughout Brimstone Sands. And Brimstone Sands is going to have a lot of verticality um, and the ability to climb pretty much everything. So once the region is uh, released, you can basically go up and down uh, and climb everything and do everything in relation to that. Um, and there will be a lot of secrets in Brimstone Sands. 
heart gems. They talked about those as well. Um, so if you have done the main storyline in uh, the current iteration of the game, you know that you get a heart stone uh, eventually. And I won't say how or why uh, for those that are new to the game or will be joining the game or uh, coming to the game. Uh, but these heart gems uh, will have a new ability that you can activate. And it's kind of like an ultimate. You can think of it like an ultimate where it charges over time based off of you attacking enemies, taking damage, and so on and so forth. And they've said that um, their plan is to have the heart gem abilities uh, be able to be used approximately every minute. So uh, you would be able to use that uh, in PvP. You would be able to use that in PvE once every minute, approximately. And the cool thing about the heart gems is you can scribe glyphs onto them and as a result, get certain abilities. Uh, they've showcased some of these already, things like, you know, charging a block and then releasing an explosion, kind of like, um, what's the the one that's in Pokemon, you know, the Rage, I think it is, or, or, yeah, something like that. Anyways, so something that channels all of that energy and pushes it out. Think Black Panther with his suit. Um, and then there's also one that um, allows you to pull out a cannon and shoot a cannonball. Uh, so these are some cool abilities, just a few examples. There's so many more, they said. Uh, well, 26 Ancient Glyphs, I'm assuming some of... There's probably going to be at least 10 or 12 different abilities, and they do scale as well. Uh, and then, with respect to the Greatsword, they did drop one thing that I think is interesting. It it scales 50-50 with Strength and Dex. So, um, essentially, you don't necessarily need to put any points into Dexterity or into Strength. You can decide which one you want to pick and uh, put them in there. Uh, I do think that at some point, though, uh, and I've noticed this with other weapons, where the dex, if you've been just putting it into one point, you, it, once you start putting it into the other, it actually gives you a bigger benefit, and that's where the 50-50 comes in. So it should allow for a lot of uh, different play styles, and obviously, as everyone knows, tanking is taking a, a, a prime role for them, and they've implemented a lot of things with the Greatsword that help with tanking and give buffs to your teammates and so on. And, and that's essentially all of the notes that I took while listening to the dev update. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that I missed or if there's something that you noticed that was cool and that I, that you think that everyone should know about. And thank you once again for watching. Keep it locked on this channel for more New World content. And I will see you all next time.